Hey everybody! Today your auto runs through Rattle Battle Grab the Loot Angry Oceans. This is the first expansion for the lovely Dice Pirate Combat game. Rattle Battle Grab the Loot. I've already done a run through for that game. You can check out that by hitting the I in the top right corner of the screen. Because today I'm actually not going to do a run through of Angry Ocean. I'm just basically going to talk about what you get in this little tiny expansion. Before I get going though, I gotta say kudos, huge kudos to publisher Portal Games. Other publishers out there, more expansions like this, please. Just a little booster pack, just some new cards, maybe a couple of dice. This is so much nicer than the standard expansion that comes in a big gigantic box and gives you so many components they won't all fit in the original box anymore. I love this. I love this form factor. And I gotta say, I'm very, very impressed with how much mileage the designers have, publishers have gotten out of just a handful of cards. So let's look at what we get. Well, go ahead and open it up. There's obviously a deck of cards and two new special dice. That's first of all. Oh, and where is it in here? A not a rule book, I guess a pamphlet, would you call it? Basically a page of rules. So what do we get? For starters, there are two new scenarios in here. One is uh, called, where are they? All right. One is called Sea Dogs. And uh, basically, this is a very, very cool new adventure that posits players starting out at the end of their careers instead of the beginning of their careers. In regular Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, you start out right from the get-go with almost nothing, just a bare bones basic little pirate ship and over the course of the game you have lots of adventures and build up and get a lot more power, get a lot of special crew members and whatnot. For old sea dogs, what happens is it's the end. You're about to retire but you want one last score. So there's a few new rules that are introduced. First of all, as part of setup, everybody right from the get-go gets to choose seven upgrades for their pirate ship. They can just choose whatever they want. So you can just start out with an incredibly powerful ship. You know, a bigger hold, that's one, two, and I don't know, some sails, three, four, five. Oh, look, lots of sails, three, four, five, and what the heck, let's have some cannons, six, seven. But you, know, you could go, I mean, yeah, you could just go for seven cannons right off the bat, off on a little tiny ship. You can set it up any way you want, but then you're not done with the, uh, just the parts. You get to put three upgrades on, like, I don't know, the double cannon. And man, this is going to be tough to even fit all this stuff on here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the double cannon actually takes up a whole another space. So, and basically you do a draft for this. Each player draws three upgrade cards and you know, picks one, hands the next two over, takes two, and so everybody gets kind of a nice even distribution as they kind of customize their starting ship. So you know, you might get some cannonballs and I don't know, the big the big drill attachment. So you start with that. And then on top of that, everybody drafts to get three starting crew members. So everybody starts out with three, they pick one, hand them over, get you know, and so you end up with three crew members and a super decked out ship. And you are really ready to go to town right from the get-go because you're an old sea dog and then you start going through a series of adventures that are entirely new and the interesting thing is these ones you notice they're all big tough red adventures every single one of them there are no beginner adventures because of course you're not a beginner you're starting out super decked out ready to go and you go through these and there's some really cool interesting elements to these I particularly like swift formation where all the enemy ships are in a, in a line a solid line formation and during the action phase where players take turns taking action as you can imagine, you have a lot of actions to take. I mean, we're starting with all these sails, all these cannons, all, you know, et cetera, et cetera. After every round of actions, this line of ships just moves, you know, in, in, in an unstoppable formation just from the top to the bottom and any ships they run into you know belonging to the pirates the players are just instantly destroyed very very cool idea you're you know you're frantically trying to get your ships out of the way so they don't get run over you're trying to take shots at these things as they go by and then ultimately you have your final battle um you know and so big gigantic battles with tons and tons of ships dangerous seas surprise at the ball norrington returns big guns square formation all kinds of cool stuff but what happens is there's a fundamental shift 
because we're not going to be buying. We, we already have our fully decked out ship. We're not going to change anything about this ship ever again. But what happens is at the end of an adventure, say you lost three ships in the regular game, you have to give up your, your plunder, your loot to be able to repair these ships and you must do it. In this game, you don't give up your loot. You in fact have to give up some of your free upgrades. So I've got three ships. Well, you know what? I'll say I'm going to lose Margarita here and I'll lose lose oh I don't know I'll I'll lose a sale see and I'll lose eh, I'll, I'll lose one of my cannons so you lose and so then for the next adventure you have less stuff and of course you'll use these and um, so over time you're, you're you know basically you're losing all these things and that replicates just trying to cobble your ship back together out of the pieces that you've got eventually though you will make it back to port and now you have the opportunity to repair all the stuff you sacrificed and to do that to get this crew member back instead of hiring new crew members you basically you go to the tavern and if you give up two rum you can get your crew member back. And uh, you know, if, you, if you go to the shipyard and give up a sail piece, you get your sail back. And, you know, you know for, for it's all parts. So, um, you know, and the loot you're collecting, basically you're just trying to use that either to repair or, of course, convert it into points because this is a race over several adventures to get the most points. Um, but also, every time you come to the ship, after you've done repairing everything you're going to repair or, you know, recovering the cards you've sacrificed by giving up some of your loot... At the, at the end of every town, one piece is lost forever. You have to choose one because the story is, you know what? Not only are you old and retired, so are your crew. They want to quit. Oh, and your ship is just you know barely afloat. So every round, there's this kind of atrophy thing where you're going to be forced to lose one piece every round, no matter what. So you kind of go through this series of old dog adventures, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then finally you have one big epic final one, which could be a traitor one actually, which is kind of cool. And at the end, um, whoever has the most points wins. This is a very, very cool twist on the standard game. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun to be able to spend all this time right up front designing this super ship that you're going to send out. It's a, it's a real blast. And, um, you know, the, the, the change... You know, it's a radical change. Seeing these pieces disappear over time as, you, as you're trying to get through the adventures is very, very cool and interesting as well. Now, uh, the next adventure you get, let's move all this stuff out of the way, is the, what's it called? The Angry Oceans. People who have the original game, remember how the original game came with all these cool pieces, the fortress, the kraken, the whirlpool, all these, you know, chains of islands, you know, all these pieces, you're wondering, well, when am I ever going to use these things? These things never appear in the game. They do now. That is what Angry Oceans Adventure is all about. Treasure Island uses the Treasure Island piece. Uh, Storm, oh, Wreck Ship uses you know all these archipelago pieces that you have to kind of sail around. Stronghold, and, I, and there's like an even stronger hold. Uh, there's uh, oh, Whirlpool and Reverse Whirlpool having to deal with things sinking in the Whirlpool. I know there's what? There's uh, Sirens, you know, they their Siren Call drag ships to the rocks so they will be destroyed. Oh, this is a really cool one. I didn't expect this. I most expected this to just be using all these pieces, but heck, they get used to stuff I never expected, like the Bermuda Square. Remember in the base game, there's this big cross, which is what you're supposed to aim at when you drop all the dice. Now, it forms the Bermuda Square. Any ships that end up in here are lost forever. That's clever. So there's lots of really cool, new, clever... Uh, oh, like, uh, where was one? I really liked the, uh, the heavy fog. This one's really neat because the fog is considered heavy volleys can only shoot short distance and when you're doing resolution of battle if ships are too far away they just don't destroy each other because of the heavy fog very very interesting take oh another one oh where was it the the storm one is really really neat uh yeah uh, this you know, the whirlpool the whole gale i forget which one it is yeah storm uh you you, you know everybody drops all their dice you know i i got my dice jen's got her dice there's some there's some bad guy dice we drop them, we do all our actions, but then a storm strikes, which means we pick up the box and we drop it again. And that could change everything before we go into the final battle. 
That is so clever, and it's such a great thematic way to represent a storm just messing everything up just by going, Wah! and you know, it didn't really move stuff around, but the dice end up flipping in unexpected ways. So smart, so clever. So uh, the Angry Oceans expansion is really cool too because you get to use all these pieces. There's a lot of really cool new ideas in here. And um, let's see, what else do you get? You also get two new dice. The brown one is Uncle Rum. He's a very interesting guy. When this one comes in, you, you drops like everything else. If it lands, and there's a 33% chance that it lands on uh, the, 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 the wheel, what happens is Uncle Rum decides to go traitor and join one of the players. This becomes an extra die that one of the players can use. It's basically whichever player is in last place. Whoever has the fewest victory points, there's a 33% chance in an, in an adventure with Uncle Rum that they will get an extra ship. And it's a pretty good ship, a, four, um, a three, four, five. So an extra ship coming your way. The other one is Joe Blade. She is interesting, and again, there's a 33% chance after she rolls that she will summon reinforcement, which brings in another die, the most powerful type of die there is uh, that's still available. So that could be very, very scary. Now, she might not. She just might have her three, four, five and just be a regular ship, or she might bring in a super powerful naval ship. Oh, one more thing about Uncle Rum, I forgot. The way he actually joins you, it's very, very cool. After it's revealed he's joined, after all the dice have been dropped and spread around, whoever Uncle Rum joins, that player gets to pick him back up and drop him wherever you want to try to um, you know, upset or move things around or change the face of dice. So that's very, very cool too. So you get these two new special pirates that appear in certain adventures, like here's Uncle Rum and Wreck Ship, and you know, here's what's your name? Joe Blade in the Golden Wreckage. So the main thing you get in this expansion are two cool new adventures that add a lot of really neat uh, cool new adventure ideas to the game. Um, you'll finally you get to use all these cool pieces that are in the base game. I, and, uh, or you can make super ships that just start out. Now, there's a little bit more. I love also, I didn't expect this, there's a lot of new effects that the, uh, that the merchant ships and the naval ships can have. Like the, you know, the, remember the regular volley where if, uh, if an enemy ship comes up with a volley, they can just, you know, take out whoever's closest to them. The Degas volley instead shoots in a straight line and takes out multiple pirate ships all at once. Or there's other cool things like they'll panic if they if you're in an adventure where they panic. They basically just, whichever way that their die lands, they just move in that direction because they're panicking, flying away. Ooh, probably the nastiest one in here is all these different effects is for the for the queen. Where um, you know, you might have multiple ships that have for the queen every single merchant ship gets plus one. So if you get a couple of these out in a mission that has those, the pirates are going to get decimated. They're going to get completely wiped out because every merchant ship has become more powerful. Oh man, so many cool things. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention about the old sea dogs. So the coolest thing about this, you know, there's all these new types of adventures that require really, really high level ships. You get to build this really awesome high level ship. But the thing I didn't mention, when you're setting up ready to do the drop, Players are required to send in all of their dice except for one. They keep one aside, you know, and they drop, all the drop happens. And then in turn order, players get to take the one die they set aside and toss it in to try to manipulate the situation. Like, oh, I don't want gen ships to be so close to these. I want to get access to them. So Boom. Oh, well, actually, I, I failed. I made Jen's ship even closer. But it's a, it's a lot of fun, too. This represents that we are a very experienced old sea captain, so we have a little bit more control, and we can really mix things up. So that's just a fun little dexterity game thrown in on top of everything else. So I got to say, this expansion is so full of really cool, neat, fun ideas. I, I really, really like it a lot. There's a couple of things I'm disappointed about. One, one of the things I'd hoped for was that this was going to, my biggest complaint about Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is it's a little bit on the long side. And I thought, hey, this notion of the old dogs where we start out fully decked out and we're just going through adventures trying to get money, that's going to speed the game up a lot. 
No, it doesn't. Um, because starting out with a super decked out ship means right from the very first adventure, you have very big, complex... If anything, I think Old Dogs makes the game longer than normal, because in the regular game, the first few adventures go by very quickly because nobody has any special powers. Everybody's starting out with, what is it, seven pieces, um, plus three crew, so with 13 special abilities right from the get-go makes these adventures take a lot longer. They're much deeper, they're richer, they're more, uh, they're more in-depth, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, but it makes it take even longer than the base game. And the Angry Ocean, it takes about the same length too. It's really interesting, it also drops all the little mini-adventures that you can get in Norrington, and so I thought, oh, that's going to make it faster, but it doesn't, uh, because well, you're still going through eight adventures instead of, what is it, nine, I think, in the Norrington. But these things end up taking a little bit more time because of all the extra added complexity. The, the cool, don't get me wrong, very neat, exciting, extra logistical stuff of having to maneuver and deal with all these things, including the epic boss fight of the Kraken itself, which is a very, very cool um, you know, way to finish off the adventure. But the game still ends up taking just as long as it ever did. Now, for me and Jen, that's okay, um, because since we only play Rattle Battle Grab the Loot 2 players, we don't mind it being a bit longer. But I can imagine, for people who are expecting, oh, we want to play with more players, but the game is just too long, this might be the answer. It's not. The game is just as long when using these. This didn't actually create shorter adventures, which is what I'd really kind of hoped it would. My only other complaint about this is, man, you know what? I wish they'd put in two page of rules, or they'd made this printout bigger with more folds, because... These rules are okay, but there's a lot of ambiguities in here. There's a lot of, well, wait a minute, how does this new power work? Or wait a minute, how does this, what, what happens if this, like as an example, Uncle Rum, he's supposed to go to whichever player is in last place. What if we have Uncle Rum in the very, very first round when everybody is tied and there is no last place? Who does he go to? The rules don't say. So there's just a lot of little inconsistencies, and I expect those came about because they were trying to, as efficiently as possible, fit a bunch of rules into just two sides of one piece of paper. I wish the rules had taken an extra piece of paper or done a bigger piece of paper so they could have been a little bit more elaborate. I'm left scratching my head at some of the stuff that happens in the Kraken battle. Um, you know, some of the special powers that the ships get. You say, well, wait, what about this odd edge case? That's okay. I mean, I'm sure all these questions will be answered in time. It doesn't ruin the game, but it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. But on the whole, this Angry Ocean, if you're a fan of Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, it's well worth seeking out, even with those caveats of the rules that need a little bit more clarification, a little bit more fleshing out. I'm sure an FAQ will eventually be released that answers all that. And there is so much cool stuff that gets added in this little blister pack. I'm amazed. Again, I start out saying, and I'll repeat, publishers, please follow this example. No more big, gigantic expansion boxes that basically take up twice as much space on my shelf. Just cool little things that don't cost very much come in a blister pack. Uh, uh, Bezier Games is really good about this too. If you see how they do expansions for like Suburbia and Castles of Man King Lua, I love this. So I very much appreciate it. I, I imagine an FAQ will be released in time, so all these questions will be answered. But man, there is so much fun. Now, if you were not a fan of Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, will this convert you? I don't think so, because like I said, it doesn't really address the primary core issue. The, the people have two problems with Rattle Battle Grab the Loot. One, it's a little too long. It's not a problem for me and Jen, because we only ever play a two-player, and it's not too long. I, I can imagine with playing it with full four players, it's a crazy long game. This doesn't fix that. The other thing that this doesn't fix is, Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is... It is self-acknowledging of the fact that it is wildly lucky. And sometimes the dice are just incredibly unfair to a player. You can make the crappiest ship in the world and then still somehow come out on top if the dice go your way. Some people hate that. Angry Oceans doesn't help that. If anything, in fact, actually, Angry Oceans, I was really surprised by this, it takes out some of the luck mitigation. Remember in the base game, there was this notion of being most wanted. Whoever was most wanted had to take the sword, and that put them at a disadvantage in subsequent adventures. That is removed. There is no most wanted. Instead, they added the Uncle Rum, which basically, for whichever player is in last term, gets um, the help of Uncle Rum. The problem being... 
Uncle Rum is not in every adventure, and even if he is, there's only a 33% chance he will help the player who's in last place. So it's weird. Angry Ocean, I'm really kind of bummed that they didn't keep up with the most wanted because this was a really nice luck mitigation that whoever's in last place, just due to bad luck, it could help them out because whoever's in first place, whoever got kind of lucky, becomes most wanted and faces extra danger. So... I don't think Angry Ocean fixes the issues that some people have with Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, but that's okay for me and Jen because we love Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, warts and all, and this just enhances it and makes it an even more fun, wild ride. So that's it, folks. That is Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, Angry Oceans. Angry Oceans. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Otherwise, hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.